got the grill on the tractor and back together. I've just got bolts stuck through it. I don't actually have it bolted on because I'm going to need to get in there and do a little work uh, before I'm ready for it to be there permanently. But I want to show you some more updates. Uh, again, got the grill on. You may remember I said that I was going to cut the battery tray and weld it back together. And I did. This uh, is the battery tray with an inch and three quarters cut out of it. Now here's my here's the way I came to that conclusion. Here's the battery tray off of the uh, parts tractor. And actually I cut it this way. And this is the back of it that goes back. And as you can see those two holes there take a bolt for a support there in the middle. And then in the front, there's a series of holes across here for various things uh, to mount the firewall and some uh, cables come through that big hole. In this, uh, the, the, this hole where my thumb is and the back hole is where it mounts to the frame. Let me show you. Right there and back here. This front hole is where the uh, firewall mounts. There is an inch and three quarters from here to here. And that is about where I needed it to be. You can see across there that if I could get the front of this tray in line with this, then I should have the clearance. It's going to be close. Uh, I'm going to have uh, maybe an eighth of an inch and so I cut that out of it, and I've got it here. I'm not a professional painter, but usually I don't have too much trouble with paint running. And I run this. It's right over in here. You probably can't see it on the video, but it'll be all right. I, I'm not going to repaint it for it. And the, the, the battery will sit here. There's still enough room for a battery to sit there. And I had some channel aluminum. And to sit where the old gas tank sat, what I decided to do was take this aluminum and make me a little tool tray. And what I've done is two pieces of it. I cut it. It's the same length as the battery, seven and a half inches. And I, I glued it together. And then I took another piece and I cut it in half and put one end down here and one down here and again used adhesive uh, JB Weld adhesive to put it together and made me a tool tray to sit in where the old gas tank and what I think I'm going to do is take some little plastic tabs and mount to the bottom of it where it sticks through those holes that'll keep it in place when I'm when I'm traveling about on the firewall I had to do a little bit of uh, customizing and I've got it uh, primed and ready for paint. And again, I run the thing. Got a couple of little runs in the primer. I'll be able to sand that out though. But I want to keep this, when I, when I started this project, I want to keep this thing as factory as I can, even though it doesn't have the factory engine. And I'm sorry for those that that offends. But as I said, once a Tecumseh is gone, you're going to pay out the nose to get parts for it. So with this, it will still mount to the front of the uh, battery tray but to get it to clear the tabs or the uh, the not the tabs to get it to clear this and to be mounted I had to cut it let me show you let me set it down here this came up and kind of curved around and it wouldn't allow it to go down far enough so what I did was cut a triangle out of here took and bent that over and welded it back into place. Did that on both sides. It was about an inch. Inch is what I took out of it. Also on this firewall, one of the problems is that here, here, and here is the support mounts. This goes back to the dash and from here and here up to the front of the grill. And it's a support rod. I'm going to have to make custom. I can get the metal from Tractor Supply 
cut it, bend it, tap it, and do everything I need to because the firewall is sitting back an inch and three quarters further. But the metal in all that I've ever seen around these are cracked. This one and this one on this particular uh, firewall. This one was good. So what I did was is take my little body hammer and tapped it all back into place, welded it up on both sides, and then on the back side, I welded in, please don't make fun of my welding, I welded in a, an extra uh, piece of metal to help give it a little bit more support. And nobody will ever see that once it's in place. I'll do a shot of this after I get all this back together. I think I'm going to temporarily assemble everything. And I've got to, uh, I'm going to take it out to do the wiring. I've got all the wiring loose here from the original switch box that I mentioned. And I'm going to wire in the, the, the wires to the original switch if I can. I'm hoping that it'll work out that way. If not, I'll, I think I'll be able to use that switch, but I'm going to have it come into the dash. If you remember on my father-in-law's, and I wish I hadn't have done it now, but I took and cut a notch here for the key. He starts his down, down here, and I won't ever do that again. So on mine, I wanted it to be into the dash. I'm going to hook the throttle cable up original to the, uh, to the dash, and hopefully the, uh, the uh, uh, choke cable as well. All right, I went longer than I intended to talk. I tend to do that. You know how us preachers are. So anyway, just to give you a shot as to some of the progress I've made and some of the work that I've had to do. By the way, I got my new steering wheel in. That was part of my Christmas. Merry Christmas to me. And it will be as soon as I get the dash stripped down and repainted, the dash will be ready to sit and I can get all this hooked up. I'm, I'm on the home stretch. I started uh, stripping the uh, fender pan. On that and the running boards, I'm going to paint it the yellow, both sides. And I think underneath where it uh, you know, goes over the tires, I think I'm going to spray undercoating under there to help protect it. All right, I'll give you maybe a quick shot before I upload this video of it back together, uh, the, the battery tray and the firewall. All right, here's the battery tray and the firewall installed. I set an old battery on there. Uh, this one won't charge up. I'm going to have to replace it. And there's my tool tray. And here's the problem that I've got. There is almost no clearance. In fact, this firewall is leaning back just a smidgen. And it, it probably wouldn't hurt anything. Uh, the hood will close. Everything will be fine right there. But I, I really don't, I don't like that. I don't want it to touch. Uh, there will be slight movement and it will rub. So what I think I'm going to do is take a file and elongate these holes and slide the battery tray back about a, maybe an eighth inch, quarter inch, and the firewall. Elongate the holes out and then when it bolts together, it shouldn't go anywhere and it should give me the clearance I need. And I wanted to test fit it before I got that painted because if you're trying to put that together, the paint will scratch up so easily. So anyway, there's the firewall and the battery tray, the test fit. And I think everything is going to be good. Now on the firewall, this big hole is where the battery cable came through originally. And right here in these two holes is where the solenoid mounted the cable came around to here and then down to the starter and I'm not going to have to do that in this one there's a hole at the bottom of the tray down there and the battery cable will come off of the positive I'm going to get a battery where the positives here and the negatives on this side and it, the the cable can come off and down and it'll go right to that starter right under that uh, hole is where the starter is on this so it'll be perfect the, K, the uh, ground cable, I can run and, and clean this off and run my negative cable down to here. Be good to go. Bye-bye.